Well, the hydrotherm boiler has had a bit of an upgrade. I don't know if you can call it an upgrade exactly. Here's the original pump for the main floor. That's all there, fine and good. And here's the new plump, pump, plump. Here's the new pump for the basement. This pump replaces the big old GE motor one with something that claims it's made in the USA. Um, in fact, I have the box, I just stuffed it up here. Designed and assembled in the USA with an American flag. But I can tell you something. Based on the way these parts are casted, like, you see those ridges there? I bet that wasn't manufactured in the USA. <laughs> but anyway, so, put that new pump in. Now, of course, I had to drain the system. Here's some of the disgustingly dirty water from the old pump and stuff like that. The bottom bolts on the old pump were leaking. Uh, the, well, the wa water was leaking on the bottom bolts, I should say. These were the old top bolts. I replaced all of them. These are the old top ones, and just your standard wear and tear. There's really nothing wrong with them. I'll save them for another project. But uh, let me show you the, uh, the other bolts and what happened. Here's the one I could get out. And you'll notice there's a very thin section there of threads. And unscrewing this, you can also see the silvery and this made the sound kind of like when you take lug nuts off of a car that squeak or that creak sound it made that sound the entire way coming off and you don't have much room here because you can't work it with a regular ratchet I mean it'll fit you you use a ratchet but you have to put a pipe on it because it's too tight so uh, <laughs> For that, that means you only have a swing of like a click or so in this area. So uh, it was pretty tight to work on. And this wire was also just barely long enough. They also don't include a new metal clamp like that for the cable, but I happen to have one already. So anyway, the new pump is in, new gaskets in there as well. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't show you the other bolt. That one just sheared the fuck off. Two turns and it sheared. And I put PB Blaster or whatever the hell it's called on it. Let it soak in. Not for too long, but even so, I did leave it for a little while anyway. And uh, that one just sheared off. So don't let these bolts get rusty. But anyway, new pump's in. It supposedly moves a lot more water than the old pump did, which is good. And it also uses... Um, really about 66% less electricity, probably even more like 70-75%. It probably uses about 70 watts compared to 300 watts approximately of the old pump. So that's kind of good, only for the fact that, you know, I'd rather use the old stuff. By the way, this pump is mounted sideways because these flanges are sideways as compared to that one there. So instead of messing with all of that and trying to turn them or anything that would disturb anything else, you just leave them alone and put it that way. And it'll stay that way until the boiler is replaced. And then, when that's done, I can put ball shutoff valves on the pipes and get everything done the right way rather than this shitty way that they originally did it. Now, the problem with this boiler is that I can't get enough pressure into it. Here's the gauge on it. Okay, and right now it's reading, oh, the top gauge, what, about 12, 13-ish, somewhere in there. And the temperature is down because nothing's been cooking. But I can't get any higher than that pressure in there. And that's a problem because then... When I refilled the system, which I do by the valve right there, that runs down this pipe, bends around, bends around, and goes into this thing. Expansion tank on top, down into this, with the little air purger thing. 
and the pressure relief valve and that goes in the boiler. That's it. I have no way to manually add water. This device here limits it to about 12-14 psi and that's not enough pressure to get through the entire system. So what I have to do is come over here to the drain valve. This is yet another problem and this valve is shot. It leaks so there's a cap on it. Uh, I just put a regular hose washer in it and here's over the last few times I had to open it what those washers have turned into. I'll give you a real close-up on it. There's one and there's the other. Just because of the heat involved. So I replaced the washer yet again. I did come up with this device because again the less you touch the better so trying to unscrew that is probably going to mess that up. I've never changed that gasket. It hasn't leaked, so good. Have changed this one and this one, which now is starting its new cracks. So that's great, and that there too. But trying to get that off is no good. But this can screw on there and give me a new connection, which is good. Problem is, like I said, I don't get enough pressure into this boiler through that thing. So, in order to make this work, I have to take the cap off, and that means that the system starts pissing out onto the floor. I then hook up a washing machine hose, which is then hooked up to the garden hose, so it's female to female at both ends, so I can connect male to male together, and then open this valve, and then turn the garden hose on very slowly. That kind of backfills the system and gets pressure up where it needs to be and I pump it up to about 20, 22 and then I can bleed all the radiators to get all the air out and then get all the pumps running. So after that very long-winded explanation, if anybody knows how this is supposed to work properly instead of my devising all these cockamamie ways to make things work that they weren't designed to, I'd appreciate a message regarding that and tell me what I could do but otherwise it is working. I'll probably re-bleed all the radiators just to double check on everything. Maybe I'll have to re-back feed the system. Oh, and the other problem with that valve is the packing nut always comes loose. So once you open it, once you finally shut it and put the cap on, it starts pissing out from the packing nut, so you gotta tighten that down. So I'm just praying that that never starts leaking. But with all that said and done, I have both thermostats turned up and uh, this way you can hear the practically silent boiler. I'll just plug it in using my handy dandy plug. And there you hear the two relays. And there's that. And there's that. It makes almost more, uh, no more noise than just ambient noise of anything else. These little things clatter, so occasionally you hear that. But when you unplug it, they stop, and there's almost no difference. pretty quiet. <laughs> no big deal. And just for those of you who would like to see the burner, I will fire that for you. I've taken the flame guard out. Safety third. There's the pilot. There you go. Obviously because all the covers are off, too much air is getting in there. But that's it. So that's all the noise that this ends up making if the camera would even focus on it. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. The heat is on. I think. But anyway, make sure you hit like. 
sure you hit subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.